well hi you guys it's a real kind of beautiful evening if you're a fisherman really light drizzle humid cloudy to be honest weather wise you wouldn't think it was july would you really but it's perfect for a spot of barbell and chub fishing that's what i've come out today to do or should i say this evening i'm going to fish into the small hours show you what i'm using that's the following that's the um seven foot angling direct rvs ambush rod for one and three quarter pound test curve center pin reel loaded with Shimano Technium in 12 pound and that's Shimano Technium in Visitech. Going up from there, quick change run, run ring, Palatrax Stones system weight or lead replacement weight. I may change that down for a lighter weight. I'm going to be sticking with it to begin with because I like to have it nice and firmly held in position, even though the flow rate's not anything to write home about on this particular waterway at the moment. Anyway, running down from there. Got, as I say, stones, power track stone system, buffer bead, anti tangle tubing, drain and sink braid hook link material, a size 6 power tracks the hook, tack sharp, really, honestly, they're brilliant, um, and a gardener liner liner. Then above that, little piece, I'll say little piece, a little SSG egg shot, that's a power tracks soft egg shot. That's just to help if the fish should shake its head to help drop the hook and the bait inside the fish's mouth and get a firm hook hold. Now up from there, I don't always show this on that many of my videos, I'm using the following, that is a Fox Captive back lead system, that's 10 grams these ones. Now I'm just trapping that because obviously it's a flying back lead but we can't obviously overhead and make the lead back lead fly back and up the line so I'm just trapping that with a couple of little grip stops, they're soft grip stops so should a fish break me off it won't be tethered with that they will pull through and pull off now obviously i'm using a seven foot rod so i'm only putting the captive back lead around about three and a half to four foot above where the lead is now the idea of that is when you're fishing areas of river where the fish can be spooky where the fish are moving into what can be shallow areas you don't want to scare them in that complete circumference or that zone that feeding zone because you know that can be the kiss of death you, you know you get a fish move in you'll get that typical ba 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 you know that line bite and you say to yourself I've got fish in the area my own thinking with that is personally I'd rather not see it if I'm not seeing it then I know that the fish isn't clipping the line the fish isn't spooking and that just gives me that added confidence that I'm keeping everything low key and concealed and a bit more stealth Rod tips always if I can, if I can't because of flow rate or foliage, but rod tip on small waterways I always angle them down if I can or get them parallel at least. If I can't and it's heavy flow then I, obviously I do fish with a rod tip up slightly. And that's the sum of it today. I'll show you the um, bank that I'm using. This is the following. Let's put the camera light on. Ooh, there we go. That's the following. That's the mainline activate but as I said in some of my previous videos I'm rolling that obviously myself but I'm rolling it different using uh, some of British Aquafeeds ingredients in that as well just to give it an extra tweak and I'm just going to be using those wrapped in some matching paste and that's going to be it I'm going to flick a few round break a few up I'm not using any bird seed today um, I've got some pellets in some PVA mesh I've got these boilies that's the sum of it I'm not over baiting that's purely seeing if we can pick up a fish that's moving in the area that might be wary for the first on, might be willing to feed a bit later on. But I'm not piling bait in, that's something that I really strongly advise anyone. If you're fishing small rivers, you're fishing for low populace of barbel. I'm not talking about the upper lee, that's not low. On a whole, some of those places like Marford Farm, they're not low populous waters. I'm talking about your Loddens, some of your areas and your Kennets, etc. etc. You know. If you're fishing for low stocks of fish, you're better off putting what little in that you can. Little, and maybe tempering it little, and then a little bit more. But don't pile it all in, don't put all your eggs in one basket, because if you do, you're really shooting yourself in the foot. And I, I know I've told other anglers in the past, you know, whatever you do, mate, don't pile it in. You overfeed it, you'll fit overfeed the one stretch for weeks. And they look at you like, you don't want me catching. That's not the case, I'm giving genuine advice. If I say don't pile it in, don't for the love of God because you're going to mess it up for yourself and mess it up for a long time and you'll mess it up for other anglers. You know, a little bit of forethought both ways 
is always helpful. And as I say, you can't take out what you've piled in. Anyway, that's what I'm using. It's lovely conditions. Got my fingers well and truly crossed, I can tell you that, guys. I'm going to fish into the small hours and, um, yeah, hopefully the old centipede will scream off. Well, that's the plan anyway. Um, we all know what the best laid plans of mice and men are. They don't always go true and they can often go awry. Well then, that's all us sorted, uh, all cast out, or should I say lowered, just lowered into position. Now my near margin, so I've got a weed bed, little gully, I've just gone for that guy. Fingers crossed, perfect conditions, but you know, perfect conditions or not, that's no guarantee. So we shall see. Nice little rise at the back there, small charm I suspect. That witching hour, lights fading nicely. That excitement, wondering when that pin and if that pin will spin. Oh, I tell you what, oh, it's an adrenaline rush when it does go. like a decent fish guys or in guys it's a barbel it's not a bad fish either uh, I'll get down the bank a bit oh oh no you don't it's a good fish guys it really is trust me it's a good fish Change hands a bit. Nice fish. Oh, some strong flow here too. Oh. Oh. Yes! Yes! Oh, this the old fish, I tell you. <laughs> Beautiful. Absolutely superb. Very, very happy with that, I tell you. Decided to move swims, so there was nothing doing in the other spot. <sighs> oh, happy days. Happy days. Nearly took the rod off the rest. Well, there we go, guys. What a lovely looking barbers. I would say it's in pristine condition, but sadly, proof of the otters. Look at that. Such a picture perfect. It's beautiful fish, ruined, and just about surviving otters. You know, it's all very well reintroducing species. It's all very well reintroducing species, but at the cost of others, are you really going to be that blind if you love your otters? Are you going to really be that blind to the rest of the subsurface that's suffering? But yeah, nice to have, absolutely made up. Did see here, well, I heard two things go along the opposite bank and they sounded pretty loud. I guess I'd say it was otters, but yeah, very happy with this. Bless it.
poor thing. How would you like to be like that, hey? Walk around with half your leg gnawed off. I'm sorry, I'm going to say it and I like my wildlife, but glorified rats. Glorified rats. Off you go. Well, once again, you've come to that time. I'm all packed up. I tell you what, absolutely thrilling to have that barbus really really made up and as always goes to show it pays to move always pays if you feel an area of rivers not having it then move try some more swims i tell you what funny story about that fish which i'll tell you now <laughs> i was sat there i just recast and i sat there for about half an hour i could hear some rats behind me and about 10 minutes later i had a rat actually brush up against my thigh <laughs> And you can imagine I went Ugh, like that and I pushed, shoved the, shoved the rat with the back of my hand up the butt kind of thing. And he, he then jumped in the river. And then straight after that happened, the butt of my rod slammed into the side of my thighs. This barbel shot off. And I've struck in, semi-thinking, knowing that I already had a bite, but semi-thinking, was that the rat that also knocked the rod as well? What, a, what kind of mad moment? You couldn't make it up, could you? Rat coming down next to your fire, you give him a slap on the rear, he jumps in the river, then you're connected to a barbers. But yeah, the weight of that fish was nine pounds. And you do excuse me, I do forget to say at times. But yeah, lovely nine pound, a pity about the otter damage to the towel. That does really sadden me. I mean, really does make me quite aggrieved. But yeah, very fun. Very apart from that, very good condition and hard fighting fish. Very nice to have. I'll tell you what is nice, I must be getting old, but it was nice to have brought my seat with me and used it in the other swim. Although it's got a carry strap, so I have to put that over my shoulder when I bike home, which is a bit of a pain, but it's nice to have when you are down and fishing. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I've enjoyed being able to share it with you. So if you have enjoyed it, do take time to share it on your forums, your Facebook pages group pages and do consider if you have liked it to give it a thum thumbs up that does uh, go a long way to being very much appreciated and if you're not subscribed bell icon subscribe button you'll be kept up to date with all my new content and all my back catalogue of older videos anyway from a very misty and cool night for July anyway it's been a happy trip and I hope wherever you're fishing you're having a good one till my next video Take care. Goodbye.